right, we're gonna try this again. I'm about a half hour later than what I should have been because I got, oh, that dirt road I run down that splits these fields. I got about to there and turned around and noticed that I had no lid on my sprayer, so I had to backtrack almost a mile down to the intersection to find my uh, lid. But anyway, we're here now. It's a little breezy, but it's not nearly as bad as it was yesterday, so we'll be all right. And the stuff I sprayed yesterday appears to already be dying because you drive across and you can see the color difference. This was the last round I took, so there's four here, and then I got these four, and then if you look between there and there, well, I don't know how it's gonna show up on video, but between there and there, there's a color difference. So instead I sprayed yesterday, should be dying. But so if I came out of here, I got four rows there, and four rows there. So I need to drive in these four. Probably won't be able to see this mark, but we're gonna do it anyway. I need to get a new lid for that thing. It's the same lid as a, a uh, liquid tank lid off of a 5100 white planter. That's what that lid's off of, but it's a little, it's kind of old and it's kind of brittle. Yesterday, after I got done video and I did go down and spray my field in Indiana, I, I just put a little bit more in the tank and dribble or splash a little bit more chemical in there. And I was four, four rows shy of finishing the damn field. And that one's far enough away. I don't necessarily think I'm gonna drive all the way down there just to pick up four more rows to turn around and drive all the way back. Dad and I were talking, I almost need to buy a uh, rack sprayer for my four-wheeler so I just drive it up in the back of my truck and buzz down there and, or for cleaning up field edges or whatnot. But anyway, Peter Pat, let's get at her. too damn windy again I got all the way around well I finished the field down there just fine I got all the way around this one and then I worked from there to here and I've already had to stop like four or five times wait for the wind to die it's just it's not worth it so 
I'm gonna leave the dad's coming to get me. I'm gonna leave the tractor down here, and hopefully today will be a repeat of yesterday. And hopefully by like two two thirty, I can come back down here and get finished up, and hopefully get that tank at least emptied out today. So, but I really really want to get done. I, I want to get as much corn sprayed as possible because we got chances of rain. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. At least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week. So I'd really like to try to get some urea spread early this week. Like, even if I'm spreading in the rain, I want to get urea spread because corn's getting to the point where, I mean, most guys are already side dressing and I really need to get on spreading some urea, but I also want to get some spraying done and. I really just need to build a nitrogen applicator. I gotta see what happens with the planter situation, so I can see what happens with the cultivator situation, and then if the color situ cultivator situation doesn't change. I haven't decided what I wanna do. I don't know if I wanna buy another cultivator and set up as an applicator bar, or the other thing I wouldn't mind doing is finding one of the old anhydrous applicator, two-wheel anhydrous applicators with the, the knife bars on the back and buy one of those and turn that into an applicator or if i could just find an actual cheap applicator but cheap applicators aren't a thing they're either cost a pretty decent chunk of change or they're beat to shit and you're gonna have the same amount of money if you picked one up cheap that, to get it going as you would have just bought so i think i could build one cheaper and i could buy one and utilize stuff i already have or stuff that i could pick up for cheap plus 28 is the way to go I mean, I, I actually, they've done field trials and you get more bang for your buck out of urea if you can get it in the ground, but getting it in the ground is a problem because you either have to spread it, it you have, either have to spread it ahead of a rain and let the water push it in the ground, or you have to cultivate it in to get it in the ground. Once it's in the ground, you're good, but, or you just have 28 and you run a little knife down the center of the row and you put it in the ground and it's there and the corn can take it up and wham, bam, thank you, same, you're good to go. So while urea is actually a better source of nitrogen for practical application 28 is better and that's why everybody does it or anhydrous if you're brave but a our ground doesn't seal up that good around there are some guys right here who do put on anhydrous but they tend to farm ground or they tend to farm a little lighter ground like you might be able to get away with anhydrous down here I don't know but the ground's so fluffy though I don't know it it might try to boil off behind the knife just because the ground's so damn fluffy but like our clay ground, the trench won't, you you have to, I mean, they make anhydrous applicators now that would probably work in our ground because they make them with closing wheels and all sorts of fancy shit to push the trench shut. But if you gotta buy specialized crap like that or you can just buy a 28 bar and it just works on everything. But anyway, um, like I say, dad's coming to get me. So hopefully we shall return later this afternoon and get finished up down here because i'd really like to get finished up down here because it's getting kind of green well you can call me a lot of things you can call me an asshole you can call me a know-it-all you can call me some fucking punk kid but you can't call me lazy this bean field here had a bunch of rag well it still got a bunch of ragweed in it but it had a bunch of ragweed it was probably you know between 12 and 16 well about as tall as it is right there along the edge of the field probably 12 16 inches tall and I knew it's, it's probably gonna be at least a week the way the weather's going before I get the sprayer switched over from bean or from corn to beans because with a little bit of well I'm about halfway done with corn now and I don't want to clean the sprayer out to switch to beans to clean the sprayer out to switch back to corn to clean the sprayer out to switch back to beans so knowing it's gonna be a minute I just brought the hoe out here and I walked this bean field got the the tall shit out obviously you can see there's still a little, bunch of small or short ragweed but get the tall stuff out at least give the beans a fighting chance till i get out here to spray it um and i tell you what the ragweed in this field is something else it's like resistant to everything i sprayed it i sprayed it with my corn uh or my uh corn program last year and it didn't even phase it it just stayed grass green the whole time 
Yeah, this is some gnarly shit. I've fought it ever since I started farming this field. And I've, I'm, I I'm all boarded this field last fall knowing the issues I was going to have. And that helped a lot. It's not nearly as thick as it was the, the previous two years. But probably going to mall board it again this fall. But anyway, here's a little throwback for the old timers. I'm sure there's a lot of guys watch my channel probably remember back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, early 90s walking bean fields with hoes or riding around on bean buggies. Glad I missed that part of life. Well, it's knocking on four o'clock and the wind is showing no signs of calming down back or down here. So I got almost a hundred gallon left in the tank. So there's another field I can pick up on the way home. that has got trees most of the way around it that might offer some cover. So I'm gonna swing past there on the way back and see what the situation is there and if I can get that field done at least get the tank empty and unfortunately I have to come back down here later and finish up the there's probably four acres left so I'll have one pass down and then the short rows and there's 12 rows already done so sucks but it is what it is if I hadn't lost that damn lid off the sprayer and I'd have got down here the 30 minutes it took me to go find it sooner, I'd have probably been done, but it is what it is, so we'll see if we can at least get the tank empty on that last field anyhow. Now this is a good looking stand of corn if I do say so myself. And it's fairly even. The hills are I mean, basically this field is nothing but hills and all things considered, as dry as it is, it really ain't that bad. This is mall boarded ground too. But I went out and walked through the center. It's not really blowing all that hard. So uh, we're gonna give her a go. Hopefully I got enough in the tank to get this field done and not have four fucking rows left like I did down in Indiana, so. Anyway, yep, yep, yep. cannot win to save my ass this weekend got here it was beautiful made my lap around the outside went down started working on that fence line made one pass down one pass back all of a sudden the sky got dark damn wind kicked up and it's like it's watching me i can sit here on the end row and wait for the wind to die down and the minute i slap it into gear and start moving the wind starts blowing 30 mile an hour. I got half finished field. Well, I got two half finished fields now. Ay, 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 ay. So anyway, I guess I'm done for the day again. And we got rain scheduled for tomorrow. So I ain't going to get shit done tomorrow. Except possibly spreading urea. Maybe if, depending on how much rain we get. 
anyway i guess that's it for this shit show and we'll catch you guys on the next one